Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to multiple linear regression. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. We use a multiple linear regression when we want to examine the relationship between two or more predictor variables and one outcome variable. This concept is distinct from a simple linear regression. In the case of simple linear regression, we have one predictor variable and one outcome variable. So let's consider a situation where we may use a multiple linear regression. Let's say that you are conducting research at a mental health agency and you've developed an instrument that measures how well people adapt to changes in their job. So an adaptability level geared toward career. And you want to be able to predict this adaptability with available continuous level predictor variables. And let's say the variables that you have available from these participants, you have their age, their IQ score, and how many hours they've spent studying how to make adaptations in work environments. So hours of study. So hours of study, age, and IQ score. With these three variables, you want to see how well you can predict that adaptability level, that skill level. So it may be that those variables don't predict adaptability at all. One or two of those variables may predict adaptability and the other variable or variables may not. Or all three of the variables may predict that outcome variable. So with these type of data, it would not be unusual to perform a multiple linear regression. And the regression will produce a line of best fit. We refer to this as a regression line based on the least squares method. So we can consider now the equation for a straight line as we try to think about the regression line. The equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus b. You have the value of the y variable, the value of the x variable, the m, which is the slope of the line, so it's the amount of change we see in the y variable for every one unit change in the x variable, and then we have the point at which the line crosses the y-axis, and that's b, otherwise known as the constant. So if we think of this in terms of regression, y would be the outcome variable and x would be the predictor variable in a simple linear regression. As we consider multiple linear regression, the equation becomes a little more complex. Instead of y equals mx plus b, we have y equals m1x1 plus m2x2 and so on, and then we add b. So in the case of age, IQ score and hours of study, we would have three independent variables. So in this equation, m3, x3 would be the last independent variable, and we would just add b after that. So let's now consider the null hypothesis here for multiple linear regression. There's no significant prediction of outcome. That's the null hypothesis here. However, we need to think about it in terms of a few different null hypotheses that are specific to the number of variables we have. So the first null hypothesis would be there's no significant prediction in this example of adaptability by age, IQ score, and hours of study. Then furthermore, we have other null hypotheses that accompany that first null hypothesis. And again, based on the number of variables we have. In this case, we have three predictor variables. So we're going to have a total of four null hypotheses. The one I've already mentioned that includes all of the predictor variables, and then one for each of the predictor variables. So for the next null hypothesis, you would have, when considering all the variables in the model, there'll be no significant prediction of adaptability by age. And then you have the same null hypothesis except for 
IQ score, and then the same for hours of study. So we end up with four null hypotheses for this example. Now in considering the output of multiple linear regression, we can think of this concept of R squared. And we use this for simple linear regression. So R squared is the amount of variance explained in the outcome variable by the predictor variable in a simple linear regression. And we use this same concept in multiple linear regression, except we have to make an adjustment to R squared. When we have more than one predictor variable, R squared is always going to increase as variables are added, even if those variables don't significantly contribute to the model. So to compensate for this, we use an adjusted R squared. And this uses, instead of variations, this uses variances. It factors in the number of independent variables, predictor variables, as well as the sample size. So the value of R squared always increases as variables are added. The value of adjusted R squared can increase even with fewer variables. So adjusted R squared is the value that we want to interpret here for multiple linear regression. Now let's take a look at the elements of a multiple linear regression. So we have two or more independent variables. And these are measured at the interval or ratio level of measurement, which you also refer to as the continuous level of measurement. The interval and ratio levels of measurement are similar. In both, there's a meaningful distance between the observations. The interval level of measurement does not have a true zero. The ratio level of measurement does. So if we consider measuring temperature, for example, the Fahrenheit scale has a zero but it doesn't represent an absence of heat, so it's not a true zero, so that's interval. The Kelvin scale has a zero, and that zero represents an absence of heat, so that would be a ratio level of measurement. The independent variable in a multiple linear regression is also known as a predictor variable or an explanatory variable. We also need to have a dependent variable. Again, at the continuous level of measurement, a dependent variable is also known as an outcome or response variable when we're talking about multiple linear regression. Taking a look at the assumptions for multiple linear regression, as is the case with all inferential statistics, the data need to meet certain assumptions so we can move forward with the analysis. The first assumption here for multiple linear regression is that we need to have independent residuals. The next assumption is the assumption of no multicollinearity. And when I refer to multicollinearity, in this case, I'm referring to the correlation between the independent variables, between the predictor variables. As you add predictor variables into the regression model, you don't want to add variables that are too highly correlated with one another. For example, if you were using the IQ score to predict adaptability, and you decide to add another measure of intelligence to that regression model, the IQ score and that other measure of intelligence may be multicollinear because they're designed to measure the same thing. Their correlation may be too strong. There are several different guidelines to determine what correlation is too high. Uh, one popular guideline is if the correlation is above 0.8, that could be indicative of multicollinearity, and you can also look at the variance inflation factor and the tolerance to determine if you have multicollinearity. The next assumption is the assumption of normality. The residuals must be normally distributed. And in order to test for normality, it's not unusual to run a Shapiro-Wilk test. If you have a p-value from a Shapiro-Wilk test less than 0.05, that usually indicates that you have violated the assumption of normality. A p-value of greater than 0.05 typically indicates you have met the assumption of normality, although you still want to look at other statistics like the skewness and kurtosis, and you want to examine the histogram and QQ plot as well when trying to determine 
if the residuals are normally distributed. Next we have the assumption of linearity. So here the relationship between each predictor variable and the outcome variable needs to be linear. So we would examine these one at a time. We would load age and look at adaptability, then load IQ score and look at the outcome variable and then hours of study in the outcome variable. Linearity is tested using a scatter plot. And the last assumption here is the assumption of homoscedasticity. And we're referring here to equal variances of the residuals for all levels of the predictor variables. And this is usually tested with a scatter plot. We take the values predicted by the regression model and plot them with the residuals. And we want to make sure that the residuals do not vary systematically with the predicted values. I hope you found this introduction to multiple linear regression to be helpful. Thanks for watching.